I feel so, so lucky to live in such exciting time, in the era of rapid technology development and first major breakthroughs in AI. Actually, this rapid growth of AI gives a good boost to the development of specialized silicon, so specialized processors used for AI acceleration. In the previous video, I talked about brain chip Akita processor, which is a neuromorphic AI processor. And this one is interesting indeed, because it emulates the way the human brain works. However, there are other fascinating approaches to solve the same problem. And one of such approaches is analog. So analog in memory compute. Actually, it is a paradigm shift and I'm a huge fan of it. So it's sort of a brain-like compute, but at the same time, it is not neuromorphic. Let me explain. In-memory compute is an entirely different approach in comparison to the most of the modern AI accelerators. As you may know, AI compute is mostly matrix vector multiply and add operations. It is extremely memory intensive and it requires moving large amount of data in and out of memory. As a result, most of AI accelerators typically rely on a large on-chip SRAM memory or external LPDDR memory. The access to memory is the bottleneck in the modern AI processors. And this leads to increased power consumption and limits the applications. Now, here comes the concept of in-memory compute. Instead of moving data from memory to compute engine, let's move the compute engine to the memory. The key idea is to eliminate those read and write access and to perform compute directly in the memory. So, the concept is rather simple. However, the implementation is not. In order to do in-memory compute, we need to go analog. Yes, AI goes analog. This sounds exciting, right? I'm gonna explain the exact principles of in-memory compute with like drawings and diagrams later in this video. For now, let's have a look on one of the first commercial processors which are based on this powerful concept. This chip is called Mythic Analog Matrix Processor. It is developed by US-based startup Mythic and it is the first commercial HEI processor featuring in-memory compute. The cool thing is, the research in this direction was carried out by many large companies like IBM, Intel, Samsung for decades and decades. But these guys made it first uh, to commercialize the analog AI processor. And this chip is capable of running multi-million neural network models at age on a processor which will fit to Alexa. This processor perfectly fits to a wide range of applications. Applications like smart home, autonomous driving, video analytics and augmented reality. It can perform up to 35 tops trillion operations per second of AI compute, consuming just 4 watts of power. It results in about 8 tops per watt, which is an excellent power efficiency. It is fabricated in 40 nanometers technology node, which is very mature and low-cost technology. If we compare Mythic to NVIDIA Xavier, which is an automotive SOC with a conventional digital compute, this chip is taped out in 12 nanometers and it delivers 32 tops per 30 watt, which means it's about one top per watt. Actually, here Mythic claims better performance at about one-tenth of the power. On top of that, Mythic processor is significantly smaller in the area and much cheaper. It's like 30 times cheaper, which would perfectly fit to the high-end and consumer electronic applications. In order to understand the Mythic technology, let's first have a look what exactly do I need for AI compute. It is actually all about vector multiply and sum. 
So the input vector has to be multiplied by a matrix which represents the weights in the neural network and then sum it up. In traditional way, we need to read from the memory the weight matrix and do vector multiplication to the array of vector signals. And the result is this vector. As you can see, there is a bunch of reads and writes to the memory, which is the bottleneck, so we would like to get rid of those. Now, here comes the concept of in-memory compute. And it's pretty intuitive, but I'm gonna try to make it fun. Here is how it's gonna look in analog way. So the compute is based on the fundamental Ohm's law. So voltage drop over the resistor is proportional to the current flowing through it. That's how it all started for me on the undergrad. <laughs> how can we do compute based on this simple, simple principle? Just imagine that there is a way to manipulate the resistance. So you can represent your neural network weights in a bunch of resistor values. In this case, all we need to do is to apply voltages to those resistors here and measure the current at the bottom here. Of course, in practice, you would need a bunch of analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters in order to apply inputs to these resistors and to read the outputs. But how we can make these variable resistors? It happens that we just have a technology which just fits right. It is called non-volatile memory or flash memory, basically the memory which retains its state when the power is off. Now, the weights of neural network are actually stored in the flash memory. So there is no need anymore to read and write them, just to apply inputs and read the output. Easy peasy. And in this point I was thinking, if weights are preloaded to the memory, it means this processor must be intended for AI compute, but no learning is possible. To double check it, I got in contact with Mythic uh, team and yes, they confirmed that this processor is intended for AI inference applications and not AI training. Basically, this chip is built out of 113 million memory flash cells, DACs and ADCs and a bunch of digital control logic. You see, the technique of analog in-memory compute makes it possible to use a single flash transistor for both storing the neural network weights and at the same time to perform the multiply and accumulate operations. In this way, we get high-performance AI processing on device, so at age, without external memory and at lower power. That's really great. And I heard from the team that they're already working on the next generation of the processor, which will be done in 28 nanometers and also featuring embedded flash. However, it seems pretty hard to scale down the flash memory, and there is no clear path beyond 14 nanometers. Actually, in-memory compute technology is not limited to using embedded flash cells only. So beyond 28 nanometers, uh, in addition to embedded flash cells, they are looking at another types of memory, for instance, uh, phase change memory and resistive memory. Actually, you know, for analog compute technology, it is not necessary to be in the latest technology node. Even today, in 14 nanometers, this processor performance is comparable to the other processors, digital processors, which are in 10 nanometers. Here, I would like to point out that in-memory compute processors and neuromorphic processors are conceptually and architecturally different. At the same time, in-memory computing is somehow similar to the brain, in the sense that in the brain, computing also occurs in the synapses, the points where one neuron touch another. So this chip is built specifically for AI. 
Such super fast AI compute is especially beneficial for applications like object detection and pause estimation. Here is the demonstration of pause detection neural network running on the Mythic processor. It is Pause Body 25, which is a popular network for virtual reality and augmented reality applications. C is working pretty well, so the Pause is processed in real time with uh, no lagging or delays. Another application of this analog processor is AGI in cars. For instance, I've noticed an issue with the sentry mod in the Tesla. The most of the time it records suspicious activity, it is me coming to the car. It would be really great to add a pinch of intelligence here, so it recognizes that it's me and doesn't record. This is just one of the examples how such a processor can be used at the age. Another potential application of this technology is autonomous driving. For instance, for cars which use cameras for vision, Mythic processor can run large AI networks locally, so at age, what is important at low power and to provide immediate feedback to the control. In one of my previous videos, I talked about the concept of age AI. And Brainchip Akida is one of the front runners in the neuromorphic processors. And Akida is a digital neuromorphic processor. And it's a huge difference here. Mythic processor, in contrast, is a matrix processor built in analog way. So the key difference of this processor to other is that it can perform analog in-memory computation. These two are completely different approaches to solving the same problem. But on top of that, Akita is also capable of on-chip learning, which is obviously a big plus. And in one of the latest videos, I was reading your comments, guys, and you're asking, okay, this is great, but what about Dojo? What about Google TPU? And so on. So I just wanted to point out that these processors are intended for a completely different class of applications. These are large AI accelerators, which are intended for AI training in the cloud. So you cannot fit something as large and as power hungry as Dojo in a car, right? Although the key focus of the Mythic right now is on AGI applications. Anyway, they've proven that they can actually scale up linearly. They've introduced a 4-chip PCIe card last year with four times the performance of a single processor. And actually, they can scale up into larger systems. For instance, you can combine 16 MP processors together, and this will support over 1.2 billion weights. And since the weights are stationary and DNN inference resides on chip, there is no external DRAM. They don't encounter typical DRAM or PCIe bottlenecks, which exists in traditional digital von Neumann architecture processors. So there is a potential for this technology to be used in the future in data centers. Another point here, this chip is analog and analog compute is complicated, really complicated. However, all the analog complexity here in this processor is hidden from the end user with digital architecture, software and firmware. And this is great. Overall, there is a lot of exciting research going on around in-memory compute. Non-volatile memories like a RAM, resistive RAM, and PRAM, phase change RAM, been actively used for in-memory compute. Recently, Samsung also published an interesting paper that they can use also MRAM, so magnetoresistive RAM, for in-memory compute. Actually, they introduced an architectural innovation. So they replaced the traditional current SAM architecture with the new resistance SAM architecture. They tested an MRAM in-memory compute test chip and they achieved accuracy of 98% in classification of handwritten digits and 93% accuracy in detecting faces. This is pretty good. 
So this memory has very good chances to be used in the next generation of low-power AI compute. And the conclusion is that this MRAM technology can be used not only for in-memory compute, but for uh, neuromorphic chips as well. And this is exciting. Now, you may like to check out another video on my channel where I explain the brain chip Akita, which is uh, also AI accelerator intended for HAI. But this one is working in an entirely different way and it's super interesting. So I will link it here. Check it out. If you want to support me creating these videos, the link to the Patreon is in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Ciao! Bella, ciao, bella, ciao, ciao, ciao.